Today we're gonna cast a replay and analyze the gameplay in BFME 1 on the patch 1.06 between two expert players on the beautiful map Dune Hero. It's a great matchup, trust me on that one. Gonzo against Mordor, good against Evil El Clasico. Before further ado, let's get it started. At the bottom side of the map we have the blue Mordor player Promine. And he's facing against the green Gonzo player Stevie at the top side. Once again, this is the map Dune Hero which should be favoring the Mordor faction a bit, because he should be able to keep those settlements early on protected against Gondor. It's a nice matchup though, Gondor against Mordor, I like these matchups a lot, this El Clasico matchups, good against evil, are by far my most favorite matchups in all battle for Middle Earth games. Ok, so we're gonna see Blacksmith Farm, and of course the Hobbit Peregrine took from the Citadel, He's gonna also capture those settlements right after. One of the soldiers is leading downside and he's gonna try to pressure this Lamry Mill as soon as possible. In the meantime, the model player starting with the Orc Pit and Gollum. Gollum is actually, let me check where Gollum is. Gollum is potentially lurking around the top side, but I can't see him on the map just yet. Maybe he was buying those mills for the model player too, I'm not sure, I can't see him. Ah, there, there he is, okay. He's gonna chase down those soldiers, Gollum is faster than soldiers and you can pressure them a bit. And he's also surprisingly tanky by the way. Alright, uh, he's pressing S all the time to take as less damage as possible and he's gonna try his best to take down this Lamer Mill, but Mordor player is gonna try also his best to deny that from happening. Hobbit is arriving around this area from the Gonzo player, looks like he wanna lure the troll from the lair to the Lamer Mill. Let's see if he can do that. In the meantime, Gondo is also trying to kill this mill, but I wanna actually check this Hobbit for a second. Uh oh, look at this now. Get cloaked. Oh, but he used Eye of Sauron. What a pro move from the Mordor player. He saw Eye. Uh, I mean, he used Eye. This way the Hobbit gets revealed again. And this way the troll was able to kill him. <laughs> what a nice move from the Mordor player right there. And he will also be able to keep this mill protected, which is actually huge. Very well done. Stevie is gonna revive his Hobbit right after. He has now two, mil uh, two farms under his control. This one and this one. Mordor might even be able to buy these settlements for himself, which is huge by the way. Was he using Gil already? Yeah, he was using Gil too on the soldiers, but it didn't, it didn't change anything and this mill was protected, which is very important for Mordor. And he's building already the Haradrim Palace for the Haradrim uh, uh, Spearmen and you know also the runes later on. Okay. In a one-on-one -on -one situation, of course, the Gondor soldiers are gonna win. They are the second strongest starting unit in the game after the Urukai from Isengard. And Hobbit is gonna try to kill some workers, I'm assuming, but it's not a great start into the game from the Gondor player Stevie so far. He will be able to take down this mill eventually. Uh, he's also building up the stable and the first Gondor Knight is gonna be on, on the field very, very soon. The first Gondor Knight you wanna always use for harassment. You wanna be able you want to make sure that you kill those mills as soon as possible because Mordor otherwise is going to get so much money. And Mordor is a great scaling faction into the mid to late game anyway. Okay, the Hobbit is going to be slowly but surely taking down this mill. But it's fine for Mordor because he's denying so much now. With the mill under his control, Gondor has only two farms under his control. And one farm inside. And that means those Gondor Knights are quite expensive. Okay, he will be able to save this mill actually. I mean, he was able to buy this mill back. Now he needs to make sure to make some more workers for that uh, to make money. Lamin mills are quite unique in BFMU1 and the only way you can make money with them is actually by having workers for the Lamin mill too. Okay, he's gonna creep this one with the Haradrims, no big deal. And I'm assuming the, um, the model player is gonna try to capture as many outposts as he possibly can and that's what I was trying to say, the first Gondor Knight is gonna be used for harassment. That's actually a risky move here from the Gonzo player, let's see if this is gonna work out. Actually not bad, he will be able to kill the Haradrims, kill is gonna be used from the Gondor player to save the Gondor Knights and he will also be able to secure the creep right after for himself. He was also in the meantime able to destroy the Slammer Mill with the Hobbit Peregrine took and he's buying the farm under his control or getting the farm under his control. I will be used to keep this Orcs buffed, this way they can hit level 2 by the way after killing this farm. I mean levels in BFME 1 are very important, so keep that in mind. Whenever you can, you need to make sure. Oh, oh, he's going for a. No, never mind. There is a tower. He needs to be careful about that. Mordor is having a great pace so far. Um, and the farm has been taken down before the Gondor Knights could make it there. So Mordor is actually pressuring quite a lot with only one orc pit. But at some point of the game, Mordor player Promine has to make sure to purchase this outpost to get even more money 
you know, to be even able to pressure more. But ideally, you want to make sure that you have Haradrims on top of the outpost from Mordor. This way, they have a protection against Gondor Knights. We'll also be able to creep this work layer at the bottom left side with the Haradrims. That's going to give him the chance to also purchase the settlement and make another Lamer Mule. Alright, um, he is not going for the Troll Cage. He want to get a Nazgul on the field as soon as possible. The Gondor Knights, they will be able to get away barely. And Morda is pressuring all the time, that's gonna draw the attention from Gondor player and also this farm, never mind. The works they are changing their minds, they won't attack this farm for now. Or will they? No, they won't. <laughs> they don't, they are not sure themselves too. Okay, the farm has been uh, captured by the Gondor player's TV. You have to be careful though, don't trample them down. When you trample them down, it's a risky situation. It's like a situational, you know, thing. Because sometimes you trample them down and you one-shot them, but sometimes you trample them down and they one-shot you. And don't take the risk because they're gonna cost only 250 for them for the modern player while your Gondor Knights are gonna cost you more than 600 most of the time. The farm has been taken down. And also this mill is gonna get demolished. Now we have Haradrim Paris level 2 and he's gonna get those soldiers of rune on the field. As a pikeman unit. He might be able to capture this outpost now. He has so far zero outposts under his control. Let me check his money real quick. He has not that much money either, so he has used just industry on this uh, three production uh, resource building, sorry. Which is a massive power spike from Mordor. And gonna help him out quite a lot in order to get the money he needs to recruit a Nazgul. Nazgul on a map like Dunharum is gonna be super effective because this map is a really big map. And you can keep yourself protected against the Gondor Knights all the time. Okay, so the situation right now is not looking very great. For the mortal player, the stable is level 2, he has also purchased, nah, he's not gonna purchase the natural upgrade just yet. He was getting many many Gondor Knights on the field before anything else. He has not even a great amount of resource income right now. But he has finally a full base now, with um, in total 6 blacksmiths to have the maximum value of the steel bonus. Which is gonna make the upgrades from Gondo cheaper. Okay, with the help of the rune soldiers, he will be able to now... He will now be able to keep those mills protected, which is very important for Mordor. And also this creep is still untouched. I was assuming that Gondor was taking this one, but Gondor is gonna creep this goblin layer at the right side, in the bot side of the map to Hero. We have still the troll layer remaining on the field, as well as this one, as well as this one at the bottom right corner. And he has only one orc pit, right? Yeah, he has only one orc pit. Maybe he needs to make sure that he has another orc pit around the outpost. This way he can keep up the pressure all the time. You can see there are Haradrims on top of the citadel. It's gonna be a nice little protection for the outpost for Mordor player Promini. Okay, I is being used. Uh, the Hobbit is invisible, but now what's, uh, see what's gonna happen. With the eye, you can reveal the invisible units or heroes. And uh, Hobbit is gonna be seen now, and it's gonna be it's gonna be taken down actually in a second from these runes. Okay, Tainted Land is available for Mordor. Gondor has to be careful with the Gondor Knights. He will be able to get away for now. There is even money on the ground. Gondor player was not securing for himself. He has Night Shields now, and it looks like he is looking for a chance to base rush. With Night Shields, you reduce the amount of incoming damage from the arrows, and that's gonna make your Gondor Knights quite tanky. Does he have heal though? No, the heal is on cooldown, so he has to be careful. The Gondor Knights are kinda damaged. Elven Allies is gonna be used to kill those runes, Tainted Land, from the Mortar player. To increase the armor from these runes, to make them tankier. He keeps rushing the base all the time and he's not demolishing in time. I think this one was not demolished in time. One of the Gondor Knights is level 4. And one more is coming. The thing is, TV, I believe, is just... Uh, not on point with the timing, you know, his Gondor Knights were already damaged, heal was on cooldown, that means he wasn't able to continue with the rush. But he was still able to draw the attention and deal some damage, but the problem is, in the meantime, look at the minimap, guys. Mortal player was able to capture this outpost offensively at the top left side, he's fighting for the map control all the time, he's gonna get the money from the ground as well. Gondor is gonna be able to lure the troll from the... Troll layer to the outpost, but it's not a big deal for Mordor because he has Haradrims on top of the outpost and they will be able to take care of this troll. No big deal. Okay, he has around 2000 resources collected. He has also Faramir, the captain of Gondor on the field and give him the chance to finally show his quality. And I'm assuming at this point of the game he will try to save for Gandalf. And to make him great, to make him white, he needs one more power point for that. Because Gandalf without Gandalf to white power point from the spellbook of Gondor is not that strong. Trust me on that one. 
Okay, the mill has been taken down. He has to avoid fighting those runes. They are very strong against Gondor Knights, by the way. Keep that in mind. Don't underestimate them. Yes, they are not able to, you know, purchase something like Forge Blades or Heavy Armor, but they are generally very, very tanky. And once they have leadership, they can even take down heroes in a second. And the only weakness from the runes really is actually uh, the Farami in this current situation. Farami is going to be able to kill them quite fast. And once he gets level 5, he will also gonna unlock the leadership. Which means 50% more armor and also fear resistance for the Nervi allied units around Faramir. Okay, outpost, the first outpost captured here by the Gonzo player, Stevie. Mortal player has right now 3 outposts under his control, but this outpost has no protection as you can see and tell. He has now the power points he needs for guns after white. And Mortal player is still far away actually from getting anywhere close for the Nazgul or the Witch King, but this is going to be changed very soon, trust me. Like, he has so much map control right now. He has so many outposts under his control. Of course, the reason why he has not that much money is because he was investing a lot of money into this outpost. Another rush is going to happen very soon. But look the money from Mordor player. It's rising to the sky. Oh, be careful. Nice micro from Stevie. Stevie is known for the amazing micro as a player in BFME 1. He's going to keep rushing the base all the time with three, four Gondor Knights. Look at that. Four Gondor Knights in total, pressuring quite nicely, four power points collected for the model player, he can be using that into the devastation, it's gonna be helpful to get the money you need to get a Nazgul or even the Witch King on the field faster. Gondor Knight has to be careful, does he have heal? The answer is yes, he's gonna use heal now altogether I'm assuming. Yeah, there we go, heal is gonna be used, look at the uh, look at the damage he was able to deal, but look at the money from Mordor in the meantime, he has almost enough money now for the Nazgul. And that's gonna change quite a lot. In the meantime, he, is, uh, he was also building an orc pit on this outpost at the top left side. He's gonna pressure the, f the farms from Gondor player all the time. And on this map, rushing the base all alone is not gonna win you the game. Map control is everything, trust me on that one. Uh, level 4 Faramir now, the archer range to get some archers first and then ranges later. For the Gondor player's TV. The farm is gonna be eventually taken down. Uh, he has no protection for this outpost, but the Nazgul is on his way. Almost the power points he needs for the Darkness too. Darkness is gonna be, um, you know, potentially the best leadership right now for Mordor. It's gonna work for the entire map and gonna make your orcs also deal more damage and make them also think here. Industry is gonna be available soon. And I'm assuming the next um, unit or hero the Mordor player is gonna try to get on the field is going to be the Witch King. Industry is gonna be used on the slaughterhouses and on the furnace. And also gonna speed up the leveling up progress, by the way, if you don't know. So with industry, your furnaces or your slaughterhouses are gonna level up faster. Okay, the Nazgul is here on the field. At the same time, with Mifrandir, Gandalf the White from the Gondor Players TV. Look at him on his Shadow Facts. He has now the power points he needs. For Darkness. Okay, so what's the plan now? I mean, Nazgul is a great counter. Uh, I mean, Gandalf is a great counter to the Nazgul. In combination with the Wandering Arrow from Faramir and the Easter Light from Gandalf, he will be able to one-shot the Nazgul from 100 to 0. So Nazgul has to avoid fighting that. He was just able to creep this lair and also gonna get the money from the lair. Smart move here from um, Promini, I like it. He should also be buying this mill at the bottom left side with these runes. Look his money, he's going for a troll gauge, but trust me, he will have the money he needs to make trolls and to get Witch King on the field at pretty much the same time. And the Nazgul is gonna create so much pressure, and Gondor player is not gonna be able to fight for the map control that easily anymore. He will always need, you know, the, the Gandalf or the Farami around to keep the Gondor Knights protected. He has to be careful, but he has no fire on these archers, they are not dealing too much damage. One of the Gondor Knights was able to survive, and the battalion should be safe for now. Okay, where is Gandalf and we need him? Let me take a look into that. Gandalf is here. Easter Light is available and also Visa, uh, Visa Plus as well as Lightning Sword. Visa Plus has been used on these orcs. Archer range is level 2 now. Mordor has a lot of money, has trolls on, his, on their way. And he's gonna try to save for the Witch King at the same time for the massive leadership bonus. Mordor is known for the leadership bonuses you get. You have the most leadership available with the Mordor faction. Keep that in mind. So you can make those trolls not only hits like an absolute truck, but you can also make them very tanky 
This way they can even withstand the East Side Light from Gandalf and even the Lightning Sword. Nazgul is coming. If, uh, he's gonna use Screech and Farami is not level 5 just yet. If Farami would be level 5 in a situation like this, this elves, they wouldn't get fear, trust me. Because Farami's leadership, besides giving you armor, is also gonna give you fear resistant. Very, very good. Okay, the Nazgul is gonna be forced to disengage, but it's fine. Look at his money. He has almost the money he needs for the Witch King. This outpost is, this outpost is gonna be taken down first. And Gondor can now work his way up to the bottom side. He will need some rangers, he will need fire arrow upgrade too. But he was already able to buy the fire arrow upgrade, but he would also need some rangers. Rangers are very strong against Mordor. So, uh, keeping this archer range protected is very important. You can also put archers, by the way, in those uh, towers. But in this case, it's not possible because Mordor player was able to put one of his workers, which is very smart. This way, he gets a lot of vision for free. Okay, outpost. He's gonna be captured now by the Gondor player's TV. He has not that much money too. Maybe Marketplace? There we go, Marketplace. That's what I like to see. Very smart move. Uh, Grand Harvest from the Marketplace of Gondor is gonna increase your resource income from the farms by 40%. Another rush is happening now. Heal is gonna be used. Witch King is on his way. The legendary duel between Gandalf the White and the Witch King of Ingmar. Trolls on their, on their way, but he needs Drama Troll. He has also used the Darkness, by the way, to make them stronger. But the elves, they're gonna be gone very soon, right? Yeah, they're gonna be gone very soon, in about 10 seconds, maybe. Paramir is finally level 5. Right now, these Gondor units have so much armor. 50% from Farami and 50% from Gandalf. But don't underestimate the trolls. Don't underestimate them. Paramir is gonna get mounted, and it's gonna become the Knight of Gondor, and will be able to get away for now. Okay, so we will need Rangers. But again, Gondor player doesn't have too much money right now. He will need Grand Harvest, which also costs you 1,500, by the way. It's not for free, of course. And the Marketplace has to be up on the field. If you lose Marketplace at some stage of the game, you will also lose all the bonuses you was purchasing from this building. So keep that also, please, in mind. Okay. And look, he has units everywhere, dude. <laughs> That's, this guy is crazy. He has, like, units inside this tower, too. And inside this tower, too. He's getting so much vision for free. Of course, the Gondor player can destroy this tower, it's no big deal, but he's not doing that for whatever reason. Okay, if you can't do anything with the Nazgul, you can always use him for the map control. This level two farm, uh, level 3 farm is gonna be slowly but surely taken down. Witch King is on his on the fields now. From the Mordor player. And uh, Witch King is, of course, way more resistant than the Nazgul. So, for example, the combination of Wanding Arrow and Easter Light is not gonna be enough to burst down the Witch King. While it's more than enough to burst down on Nazgul. But he has Arches there. With no heavy armor, they're gonna get one-shotted. Nice attack from the Witch King. Witch King has splash damage, so it's able... I mean, he's able to, you know, hit multiple units at the same time. So, grouping against Witch King is the worst thing what you can do. Four trolls and a drama troll. I, Witch King, and even Darkness. These trolls are gonna be immortals. <laughs> Trust me. Okay, the Nazgul has to be careful. There are units inside, but they have no fire for whatever reason. He needs to make sure that they have fire. He was also demolishing the archer range, which is something I don't recommend you guys to do. Archer range is very important because Gondor archers are not very strong. You will need rangers. They are not only shooting way faster, but they are also dealing way more damage than Gondor archers. Eagle's gonna be a nice power spike. He's one power point away from that point. And Smorda is getting closer and closer for the Balrog summon. And Smorda keeps fighting for the map control all the time. And Smorda has still this outpost under his control with three uh, resource buildings. He has mills. He's in a good standing, trust me. Uh, Gandalf is level almost 7. The more levels Gandalf gets, the stronger he's gonna become. Level 10 is gonna unlock his Water of Power. That's gonna make him to an army killing machine. However, the Water of Power is only good against normal units. And not good against heroes like Witch King, Nazgul or even the Trolls. Trolls are way, way tankier than normal units can ever be. Uh, the only weakness of Trolls are Arches pretty much. Okay? Maybe Borom Boromir could be nice, maybe. Boromir is the only possible way for the Gondor faction to get damage leadership. And in a situation like this, you want to have damage leadership. You want to be able to burst down these trolls fast enough. The farm has been taken down at the top right side. 
you know, Modern Play might also need some catapults or something like that, but he was going for the combos instead. He has two combos, which is smart because he will need some sort of counter to the, to the Eagles, you know? If you don't have combos, how do you want to deal with the Eagles? Alvin allies defensively, that's going to be the first big fight in the game, actually. Witch King has to be careful. Is that a light? It's going to be used on the Witch King. That's going to force him to retreat, but it's not enough to one-shot him. He has enough power points for the land. Is he going to go for a beautiful and juicy Visa Plus? That's the question. He has heal. Throws are charging. Farami is running for his life. Can Farami get away from this situation? The answer is probably no. Oh, Gandalf is going ham. That's a risky move. Nice splits here from the model player. I like the way he's microing around. Gandalf has to respect these trolls. Shield Bubble to save him against the troll. If Shield Bubble wouldn't be a thing here, this troll would have dealt more than 50% of his HP. Trust me on that one. Even Gondor Knights are dying very fast. Farami is going to be his next target. And he has no tree in his hands. This way he will be able to catch this oh, nice Visa Plus to knock him down. But look, you, you see how tanky he is. He was just tanking. Look the damage he's going to be able to deal. Do you see that? Three hits. Uh-oh. Can Witch King die here? Oh, Witch King is going to die, but I think... I think... Oh, 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 run! You white wizard. Oh my goodness. He will be able to save him, right? Well, that's quite nice from Stevie. I have to admit. Very nice done. Very well done. He was able to kill the troll. He was able to kill the Witch King. And he will also be able to save his Gandalf. But he lost a lot. Archers, a lot of Gondonites. He has only one Gondonite left on the field. And even with the marketplace, he doesn't have too much money. Because he keeps losing those farms left and right. He's finally rebuilding the archer range, but it's going to be level 1 again. And you will need to recruit 4 archers to make it level 2. Okay. I mean, there is only one troll remaining on the field. And which king is that? Now is the time for the Gondor player to shine. Because of the eagles, you can make something happen. Promine has 10 power points collected after the darkness. He is getting closer and closer for the Balrog summon, which, of course, is able to one-shot the entire Gondor base all alone. He's going, he's going for the uh, Stormwalker. Uh, for the Numenorian and also the Archers uh, to make the tower stronger, but this is not going to help you against Balrog, trust me. Balrog is going to not attack your walls, he's going to just fly inside your base. So having stronger walls against Balrog is pointless. And also the towers are not going to deal too much damage to the Balrog either, and you will need catapults or trebuchets in this case, and you will need a lot of them to be able to deal damage to the Balrog himself. Paramir is alive, he's level 5. He's running for his life. In a situation like this, the trolls can't catch you. If the trolls have three in their hands, they won't be able to catch you. You know? You see? As they're gonna try to hit you, you can just keep running and they will just hit the air. If you wanna be able to chase down the infantry heroes with trolls, you wanna make sure that they have no weapons. They, have, they are only fighting with the fist. This is the only way you can actually kill them. 11 power points collected. Look the money from Mordor. Uh, he's reviving the Witch King and the Nazgul. He lost also the Nazgul somehow. I didn't even see that. Sorry, my bad. Gondor Knights are dying. Look at the Eagle's HP. Oh, they are gone in a second. And Gondor Knights, even level 10 Gondor Knights, can't withstand this much damage. Look at their levels. Level 7 combo, level 6 combo, trolls, drama trolls. Um, I was, I think, Darkness wasn't even available for this fight. So Eagles in a situation like this was kinda a big waste from the Gondor players TV. I mean, you know what could be nice in a situation like this? I believe Cloudbreak would have been better. Because Cloudbreak is going to reduce the armor of the units from your opponent, but also going to reduce their movement speed. That means the trolls, they will move quite slow when you use Cloudbreak, and you have much more chance to either disengage or even kill them. Darkness is available now. Look at the money from Mordor. He has, he's going to have all the flyers on his on the field very soon. Witch King is almost back up. He has a Nazgul. The other Nazgul is also getting revived. He has so much money, he can do whatever he wants. He can go for the Mumakias, he can go for the Siege Warwicks, he can do literally whatever he wants. Okay. The farm is gonna be taken down, the mill I mean from the model player, and finally Gondor player realizing, okay, I have to fight for the map control, but this is easier said than done. Because the Nazgul is gonna keep pressuring all the time. And this outpost is still under control, I mean, this tower is still under control from the model player too. And getting pretty much free vision control since the beginning of the game for no reason. Okay, so he has a l the thing is, Grand Harvest is gonna only increase your um, resource income from your farms. But you can see in his base, he has only blacksmiths. He has two farms here, one, one here, four farms, and five farms. That's it. Six farms now. 
Even se okay, seven farms. I take it back. Seven farms is good number to actually keep the money income safe and good. Uh, Warning arrow from Farami is dealing almost no damage to Witch King, so keep that in mind. It's only dealing bonus damage to the Nazgul, but Witch King is the Lord of the Nazguls. Okay, look at the damage, almost enough to one shot. The Warning arrow would be easily able to finish him off, but for now the Mortal player will be able to save his Nazgul. I mean, he's playing safe, which is smart because look at his power points. He doesn't need to rush anything. He is like six power points away from Balrog. Balrog is a game-winning ability because killing this base. Uh, even though it's not gonna win you the game because he has outputs, but it's gonna cost him so much time and money. You cannot replace the buildings which are level almost 3, you know, that's not possible. Look at this laser towers now, as you can see. He needs more and more trebuchets to be able to hurt the Balrog once um, he is summoned. A lot of power points for Mordor and not that many power points for Gondor, but he's also only 6.5 power points away from getting the Army of the Dead unlocked from the spellbook. Paramir is missing his brother, Boromir. Boromir, trust me, is actually a good choice in this matchup. Not only you give 60% damage leadership, but also he's able to knock down the enemy trolls on the ground all the time. Eagle Summon is on cooldown, and that's gonna be a big fight now. Mordor is preparing himself for a massive fight. He has many many trolls, drama trolls combos, and he's making a move now, guys. He's making a move. Let's see what and how much damage he will be able to deal. That's gonna be a massive fight. Eagles are still on cooldown, keep that in mind. We have a Witch King, we have a Nazgul, we have a lot of combos, and we have also a lot of trolls on the field. The Witch King is getting bursted down, he's a Witch King, Witch King, Witch King, Witch King, Witch King! He's, he's not paying attention! Gandalf is gonna be forced to disengage, he's very low. He was getting a beautiful Wizard Blast off into, the, into backline, but, you know, losing Witch King is gonna cost you so much leadership. Look at these ranges, do you see that? That's what I mean, ranges are hitting like a truck. Imagine Boromir in a situation like this with the statue, but the statue is in a bad spot. You wanna build it around this area. This way it's protected longer. The rangers are dealing so much damage, but is it gonna be enough? Because he has so many many trolls remaining on the field, Gandalf is quite slow. Um, no, he's not. He was actually able to heal up. Nice lightning sword here from Gandalf, I like that. And I think all the trolls are pretty much gone. The Faramir, 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 does he have heal? Does he have heal? Does he have heal? Yeah, he has heal, but is he gonna waste it for Faramir? The answer is no. Oh, he was using heal actually, but Faramir just got... You know, got, just got killed. He has almost the power points now he needs for the army of the dead summon and what is about Mordor? Mordor is one power point away from the Balrog summon as well and that's gonna be the breaking point. What's gonna happen? Is the Gondor player gonna use the army of the dead defensively? In a situation like this I would choose to use it defensively because I believe very very late game Gondor is gonna come ahead. Oh, oh, nice one, nice catch. Once again from this Mifranzia, he's level 9 ladies and gentlemen, level 9. Does he have now AOD? Yes, he has AOD, Army of the Dead. And Gandalf is getting closer and closer for the level 10 as well, for the Water Power, which is gonna be an insane power spike for the White Wizard. Okay, let's see. I mean, the problem here is with the Army of the Dead, it's not able to attack the Nazgûls, right? It's an infantry summon. He's gonna use it. Gonna try to kill the Citadel, but power points from Mordor player are also rising to the sky. I think in a situation like this, if it would be a better choice from the Gondor player to use Army of the Dead defensively to deal with the Balrog. And you will see what I mean once the Mordor player has the power points collected for the Balrog. Oh, nice one here once again with the Gandalf. I mean, Gandalf is a Nazgul killer in this game, I have to say. The Citadel has been taken down. But he has outposts, it means he can always revive his heroes from the outposts. Look his power points. He has Balrog summon now, guys. Oh, you know. That's gonna be awful now for Mor for Gondor. I mean, for Gondor, of course. For Gondor! For Gondor! For Gondor! You heard Boromir, guys. Is this gonna be enough? Is the captain of Gondor? Oh, oh, there comes the bad boy. Eagle Summon defensively. But the Eagle Summon can also get one-shotted by the by the Balrog when he has the fire whip. Uh oh. Uh oh. Look at the stars are not hurting him. The only thing that are actually hurting him is uh, the, are the Eagles. Look at this breath fire. Do you see that? Every building is getting one-shotted. He's trying to beat him with the Easter Light. He might be able to finish him off, but he has to be extremely careful. Losing this base is gonna cost him so much money. 
and so much time to rebuild too. He needs to replace now the marketplace, he needs to repla replace so much. I mean, he can just kill the base, right? Yeah, he can just kill the base. The Breath Fire is gonna be available very, very soon. Oh no, maybe Eagle's gonna finish him off. Let's see if this is gonna be the case. Yes, it's gonna be the case, actually. Eagles, one more hit, but can he get the Breath Fire? Yes, he can! Oh my goodness! But he couldn't kill the Citadel. Look how many power points he got from killing the Balrog with the Eagles. <laughs> But look his money too, like he's, he doesn't have that much money guys, he has to replace now the marketplace, but you cannot replace the level 2, level 3 blacksmiths, that's not possible, you can only replace them with level 1s, it means you have less money anyway. But that's really bad. Uh, Witch King, Nazgul's are gonna join the battlefield soon, that's a Rohirrim allies and Elven allies summon at the same time, like look at the army size from Gondor. The, Naz uh, the trolls are getting bursted down. That's an Easter Knight against the troll, which is not getting attacked by the archers, which is very smart. Split the damage whenever you can. The second troll cage is coming up for a mortal player at the same time. He's gonna try to survive this. But will he be able to do that? Even Katas are moving forward. Gondor player is going all out. You wanna win the game, and you wanna win the game right now. But is he gonna be able to do that? The trolls are still very scary though. He needs to go for a Cloud Break. I don't know why he's going for the Rohan allies. It's almost a power point for the Cloud Break. Cloud Break is a massive power spike for Gondor because it's gonna slow down the trolls big time and gonna make them weaker and weaker and weaker. Does he have Easter Light? Let me check. The answer is no, not yet, but he's almost level 10. Um, the thing is, Witch King is almost back up and Witch King will be able to save the day. Trust me on that one. Many, many level 3 furnaces, very tanky. It's a Lightning Sword to kill one of the troll cages. The Drama Troll is doing a nice job also defending. Gandalf has to be careful, don't under underestimate the troll's damage. Do you see how hard he's hitting? Oh my goodness, he was underestimating the troll. With this much leadership, dude. Oh oh. This is my hour. No man can kill me. Heal his uncle, then and Gandalf is going to be taken down by the Witch King himself. Holy guacamole. That's what I like to see. I mean, not really, because I like Gandalf more than Witch King, of course, but... I like this game's, you know, it's like intense game. It's like back and forth, back and forth all the time. You don't know who's gonna win this one. I still don't know who's gonna win this one, chap. Okay, so we have um, Mordor with over 10,000 resources. 10,000, he has enough power points for the devastation. He has enough power points to get even more money from the power points. You know, Mordor or evil factions generally have more resource income than good factions. Gondor on the other side, look his money, he's not even able to, he's not even able to build up the base just yet, like he lost a lot, he lost the farms over and over again and I like the way that Mordor player keeps pressuring with his Nazgûls and with his units the map control all the time, very important to do that. Army of the Dead is gonna be back up very soon and Balrog too right, I mean Balrog was used like 30 seconds after the Army of the Dead. The thing is, how we wanna deal now with the Nazgul and the Witch King? He's gonna use AOD, but is this gonna be enough to finish off the base? I don't think so. He has to he has to deal now with three Nazguls at the same time. And Gandalf is even dead. Like, is he reviving Gandalf? No, he doesn't even have the money to revive Gandalf because he's very expensive now since he's level 9. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. I mean, he's going for a desperate move, but at this stage of the game, I would say it would be a better choice from the Gondor players, David, to use the AOD to kill Balrog, actually, you know? The trolls are ch charging in. There's no archers inside the outpost either. Oh my goodness. Cloud break. But how we want to deal with the trolls now? The answer is you can't. There's no archers inside the outpost. Three Nazgûls. Trolls. No counter. No money for the Nazg uh, no money for the Gandalf. Rohan allies, he's gonna keep up the pressure, but Mordor player has so much money. Even if he would somehow lose this base, he would not lose the game because he has so much money he can rebuy everything in a second. Oh oh one more time. Eagle summon once again. He's flying inside, using ignite at the same time. Use it when you land, just like he does, for example, you see. Kill the Citadel. Oh, he was not flying on top of the Zitter. You need to make sure that you fly on top of the Zitter. This way, one outer attack from Balrog is enough. Breath fire, beautiful one. I like it. Yes, time. I mean, he can use fire, but I don't know why he's not using it. Just use whip and you can kill one of the eagles in a second. This way, you don't take too much damage. 
and also use ignite ignite is very important that's gonna give you 200 percent damage boost and also 50 percent armor that's gonna make you tank here all the nazguls for the reinforcements oh they are dying quite fast to the towers look at the tower damage to the nazgul <laughs> that's crazy can you do it the answer is yes and the base from gondo has been taken down ladies and gentlemen in the meantime this outpost got also destroyed from uh gondo look the money from Mordor. do you see that he has 22,000 resources in the bank and gondo won't even be able to buy this base back just yet and that's a proof that map control is everything you can just buy, buy the space yeah there we go he has enough money to build towers to lose it to buy it again to lose it to buy it again there's no arches inside this one really okay look he's building multiple orc pits building towers he has so much money once again you know he will be in a good spot and if even if he loses that that's not gonna change anything i mean i don't think i don't think that i don't think that gondor can turn this game around anymore because he's so behind like he lost a lot he has no money not even money enough to get his gandalf the white back on the field he was making a big mistake around this area underestimating the damage of the troll okay looks like this base is gonna be potentially taken down but it's not a big deal for mordor trust me look his money guys he was just buying an entire base and filling it with full buildings and he has still over ten thousand. he doesn't even pick um, the devastation just yet from the spell book doesn't even need that Imagine that, the devastation is also gonna give you a lot of money. Okay, the Witch King is here to save the day, and he will be able to save this base, by the way, against the Gondor Knights. That's a darkness being used to kill this outpost as soon as possible, and now Mortal Player Promine knows I got this game. All I have to do is destroy the last remaining outpost from Gondor, and Mordor will be victorious. As Kofmok would like to say, the age of man is over. The age of the orc has come game over and stevie knows i can't win this one he's gonna give up call it gg and that's it that's it i hope you guys enjoyed this one if you did please don't forget to leave a like on this video subscribe for more content like this and check me out on my twitch channel twitch tv slash beyond standards i would love to meet you in the next live stream tomorrow sunday is the day when we are live streaming sunday monday wednesday and friday in those in those days around 6 to 7 p.m gmt plus 2 you will be able to catch me live on twitch again i would love to meet you again thanks for watching guys see you next time until then take care of yourselves and as always stay beyond standards peace